Hey guys, I uh, recently put up a post asking if anybody would like to see a video on how to incorporate uh, SQL into Excel, basically use Excel like a database um, with uh, linking and everything. And so far I've gotten a positive result, All right, only six votes, but there's a few people that like to see it. I did a post here where I showed with really only a few lines of code here, you can uh, link up uh, sheets in Excel to uh, behave like a database. And so I'll walk you through that now. Uh, here I have my example. If you just want to look at the code really quick, if you already have a uh, kind of an understanding of uh, VBA in Excel, um, you can just take a look at this and or look at the uh, LinkedIn post. Um, but we'll walk through it again now just to uh, get an idea here. So I'm going to create a new uh, workbook. And uh, immediately I'm going to save it. So I'll just call this uh, uh, SQL Excel. And because we're going to add code to it, uh, we can't save it as an XLSX. We've got to save it either as an XLSB, an XLS binary, or an XLSM, XLS macro. So I will click more options here. We'll save it in documents and where it says Excel workbook, we'll just change that to Excel binary workbook. And so that will enable code. And let me hide this down here, save. Okay. All right, so uh, let's imagine that we have some data here on sheet one. We'll just put in, let's say, uh, ID and name. And let's say we've got a few names, Eddie, Joe, John, Mary, Pasquale, and then each of them have an ID. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's also create another sheet here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll have an ID, and then we'll, let's say we'll have their uh, um, items. Uh, value of item sold. So I'll say val, I'll just say uh, value or amount. And let's say, um, you know, ID number one sold 100. And we'll, you know, ID one would be me, Eddie. Let's say I also sold uh, 200 on another item. Let's say uh, person number two sold 500, person number three sold a thousand, a thousand dollars worth of a certain item. Let's say they also sold 2,000 of another item and uh, 4,000 of another item. ID number four only sold five dollars worth of something. ID number five sold uh, 200. And uh, ID number two sold, uh, let's say, $345. All right, so this is a, a small example, but, um, you know, it's, it's relevant when it comes to SQL. Uh, normally, you know, um, summing up this data via two sheets, you know, you can do it on the front end with functions. Um, and it's, it's not too difficult, but if it was massive amounts of data and you wanted to sum it up quickly, you could do it with SQL. So let's create a third sheet here. And we'll just call this our output sheet. And let's say we only want the name and the total sales. What we want to do is we want to look up unique names and a sum of all their respective sales. All right, so to do this using SQL, we'll go into our uh, Visual Basic Editor, our IDE. And uh, this is the code. So we're basically going to uh, walk you through how to implement this code because there are some, there is some setup here. So for this project, this new project, we're going to create a new module. And I typically like to name everything as, as most people know who watch my videos. So I'll just call this mod. ADO, act, ADO standing for ActiveX Database Objects. So um, I'm going to use what's called an early bound library for 
um, ADO. You can use late bound and that's usually recommended because then you don't have to worry about the, um, uh, the version. It will automatically adjust to whatever version that a person who's running it is on. Um, so we're going to, we're going to install the active X database objects library 60 or I think there was six one I think it's up here because it's in my other project all right and so what's great about early binding is that you get um, you know the IntelliSense so that when you type an object you get all of its methods properties events methods all, all that stuff um, so we're gonna do that in this instance and then you know we can also late bind it which is great if you're gonna distribute the project um, but we, you know, with Microsoft um, uh, object or Microsoft projects, you know, usually early binding is safe just because you know that the drivers are typically going to be installed on everybody within your organization's computers. Uh, typically, they're similar, somewhat similar builds. All right, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to click OK. So we we have our early bounds reference to ADO. I'm going to create a public subroutine called. Um, See, we'll just call it SQL in this instance. Um, we want to create a uh, connection string or a connection variable. So we'll call it CN and we'll make that a new ADOB DB. So ACAVEX database object database connection. And then we want to instantiate that connection. So what we can do is we can say uh, connection open. Now we need the connection string, and so now I will introduce everyone to a great site. Anybody who does any kind of software development knows about the site connection strings. And uh, this site will give you all the connection strings you need um, for every type of connection. And we're looking for an Excel connection because we're going to be doing um, SQL from within Excel, so this is going to be an Excel connection. And we want this uh, Microsoft Ace OLEDB 12.0 driver. I think the predecessor was this one, the uh, Jet. Um, but this is the one that uh, I think from 2010 or 2013 onward that you can use. And we're going to look for the driver that we need. All right, so this one is 2097 to 2003. That one will work. Um, yeah, that one will work. Actually, they'll all work. Huh. Just want to make sure I'm getting the latest driver. Yeah, oh, that's, that's strange. I didn't think it would work with like such an old version of Excel, but, um, that's cool. All right. So we're going to, we're just going to use, uh, this provider right here, this one will work. So, you know, basically it's, it's asking the provider for the database and it's, it's this Microsoft ACE OADB, which is natively installed where your uh, data source is. So this is going to be the file itself. So we're, we're going to change this to um, this workbook dot full name so that we natively get the full path. Um, Extended properties is uh, Excel 12.0 XML. Uh, when you when you zip any Microsoft um, document, a workbook, or or Word document or PowerPoint presentation, um, they all turn into uh, basically open uh, open XML docs, which you can interrogate, and I, I imagine that's what this indicates. And then HDR indicates whether or not you want a header. So we do have headers in ours. So we, we're going to leave that as yes. If we didn't have headers or we wanted to leave out the headers, we could do no. This IMAX is another important thing because what you'll notice is um, if your columns do not, um, if your columns do not have similar data types, uh, it will, Excel will try to assume what the data type is. And I think it does that based on the few 
the first few records that it gets. So if it's just numbers, right, it will assume they're longs or integers. If it's a combination of integers and text, I think it will apply it as like a variant. And so IMX does come into play every now and then. For our, for our small example here, it doesn't, so we can leave this property out. So I'm just gonna copy this one right here. Let's say copy. And then we're gonna say open that up. So this, this just creates a uh, connection here to the uh, cell file so that we can treat it as a database object. And we're just going to uh, test that really quick. Uh, we do have to uh, just, uh, we just walk through the code. Now we also have to change the data source here. So before we walk through the code, let's just change the data source. We're just going to say this workbook got full name and, and so instead of uh you know explicitly hard coding a path we know we're just looking at this document so we're just uh interrogating the this workbook native object and getting the full name property and it will always give us the name of our uh workbook and that's what we need here so we'll just test this real quick we'll walk through i'm pressing f8 on my keyboard to step into the code all right so it opened up the connection no problem so we're good all right, now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a record set from this object. And so uh, we're going to dimension a variable as a record set. So we'll just call it RS for record, short for record set. And we can just type record set here because we have a connection to the ADODB library. So I am going to um, just show you here. You could also do ADODB.record set. That would also be acceptable. All right, so now we want to, you know, just uh, interrogate some of these these objects, make make sure that it works. So I'm going to say set my record set equal to connection execute. So this is where we can execute SQL against our native uh, uh, workbook, and we'll just start simple. We'll just say select everything from sheet one. And when you're when you're coding in uh, SQL. This sheet one object refers to the, the front facing name of the sheet, not the uh, programmatic name of the sheet. So, you know, this was called like sheet main, you know, that's irrelevant. So that the, the program programmatic name of the sheet does not mad, matter. It's the front forward facing name of the sheet. So here we're just going to say copy everything from sheet one and let's just put it the output on our output sheet. So we know sheet three is our output sheet and we're going to say range a2 and copy from record set and copy this record set in and let's just see if we get data all right so we get the connection we run our we we execute our uh, sql commands against sheet one and then we put the output in sheet three our output sheet now we should see some output there there's our SQL Excel. There's our output. All right, we got it. We got the name, um, the ID, and the name of the people. But this is not what we want. We just wanted to test to make sure that we just had a successful connection. So we'll modify our SQL so that we get the name and the total sales. All right, so we have to change our uh, SQL around first. So the first thing I like to do before I, I start designating what I what I specifically want to do is just to get the connections out of the way and this is a simple connection so we're going to um, say select everything from sheet one and we'll do a left join um, of sheet two which is where our sales data is and we're going to link it on id so we're going to put in sheet one string id there's, there's many ways to form these connections, I like to do it the safe way with the brackets. Um, if your if your sheet front foreign name has face has spaces like this, you can wrap this in um, apostrophes. And I forget if the apostrophe goes in between the dollar sign or after. I think it's between, but um, in this instance, we don't have any spaces, so we uh, can leave that blank. We're going to link on. Uh, sheet one ID 
equal to sheet 2ID. So obviously a very simple example here, um, but it, it shows you how powerful uh, SQL in Excel can be. All right, and what we want is we want only the name from sheet one. Now let's forget if name is a uh, protected uh, word, but we'll find out real quick. And from sheet two, we want name, and from sheet two, I think it was sales. Or amount, maybe. And then we, we don't want just the amount because I'll, I'll walk you through this because the amount will, will iterate all of the items. And we don't want all of them. We want the summation. So like we want Joe summed up. We want Eddie summed up. Uh, John summed up. John's got three sales. So we don't want the uh, individual amounts. We want the summed amounts. And so we'll just change our SQL around slightly. We'll just say give us the sum of the amount. And now because we're doing um, aggregates here, we have to do a group. So we'll just say, uh, let me clean this up a little bit here. We'll continue on to the next line. And we'll say uh, group by, and we're grouping by the name. So we'll just, uh, you know, just like you do with normal SQL, we'll just say group by. Oops. I should put in a quote here. Now, if we walk through our code, we should get our all the names and grouped by all of this, the summation of the sales that they made. Looks like Mary only made five dollars. Yeah, that's correct. All right, so that's uh, an example of how to do some uh, SQL in Excel.